Hey everyone, this is another Fusion 360 modeling tip, and today we're specifically going to talk about how to animate a model directly within Fusion 360. So I'll show you a few tips on how to use it here. It may seem daunting, but the good folks at Autodesk really made it quite easy. I'll also show a super simple post-production workaround in Adobe Premiere Pro that makes it even easier. So make sure to watch till the end. Well, let's get started. Up in the far left corner of your drawing screen here, you'll see the word design. If you click on that radio pull down button, you can take yourself down to the animation button. Once you're in this format, things change a little bit, and you'll see a video timeline at the bottom of your screen. Now this is tip number one. This can be completely undocked, and if you have multiple screens, it's quite helpful to put this over on a separate screen so you can expand it and still clearly see exactly in your video how your model is framed at each step in the timeline. The timeline by default there will be a single storyboard and think of this as a session of recording so for example for me I will do a storyboard of the fuselage and then I would perhaps do a separate storyboard only for the wing and then eventually edit those together in video editing software. On the first column of this timeline there's an area called a scratch zone what this does is this allows you to set up the model any way you like, or your view for that matter any way you like, without recording any of these changes. Once you slide your indicator off the scratch zone onto any point in the timeline, when you make a change in either view or editing of a component, it will be recorded at that point on the timeline. Now, that's a good thing to point out that you must set your model up correctly. It's good practice to do this anyway, but you can only really manipulate components, not bodies, in your timeline. So make sure that you have them all set up correctly as components. These are the visibility options you have available to you at this point. Anywhere on the timeline that you drag your marker, then you can look through your model list and choose to turn on or off an object. Once you replay, at that point in time, the object will turn on or off. Now here's another tip. That object by default turns on or off very quickly. But if you carefully touch the side of the slider, you can expand it so that it's slowly dimmed and goes away or slowly turns on. And I think that's a more dramatic effect. Once you record any change in the view on the timeline, on the very top of your timeline editor will appear this view section. Now while you're off the scratch zone at any point that you choose to zoom, pan, or orbit, that change will be recorded. So it's quite simple to turn objects on, to turn objects off, and to orbit and change your views. You can then scrub the timeline back and hit play and see these changes. If you don't like something that you've done, it's simply a matter of deleting it from your timeline and starting over. I'd like to point out that oftentimes while you're turning objects on, you're going to want to reframe your view. And perhaps you haven't even decided exactly what that view should be yet. So if you look up here at the top, this button right here allows you to select whether you are or are not recording view changes while working in your timeline. This is very useful for when you're simply manipulating objects, turning them on and off, getting a better view of them, and you don't want to record all these changes to the timeline. You can get all of these things set up and then later play back through and focus specifically on recording changes in your view later, and this is my preferred workflow. Now I'd like to talk about the Translate tool. This is not the Move tool because this is only happening in your animation space. Anywhere up on your timeline, you can choose to move an object and it will record its motion. So I will demonstrate how this is done with, say, a bolt sliding into a hole on the firewall. You'll also notice that there's an Auto Explode feature right here. It's certainly interesting to play with. If it's a simple object, it may actually even be useful to you. I don't find it particularly useful for a complicated model because I want to manually control where each of these parts move for clarity, but it's a nice little addition. One option within this tool is to turn on trail line visibility. These show where the object is and to where it's going. In a video animation, I will not use this, but you can also create an exploded diagram still image. That would be quite useful, and these tracks, so to speak, would be very helpful in helping visualize where things should go. Now, here's a complaint I have. Perhaps it could be a feature request in the future, but I would love to be able to play the timeline backwards. Here's why. My models may contain hundreds of parts. I'm not mentally going to remember the names of all of these in the correct order. So my workaround when using this tool is that I set my animation up in reverse. 
I have everything turned on at the outset that I want to show as the final piece of my video clip. That way I can simply touch on a component, right click and find it in the browser tab. Then as I progress my time slider, I incrementally begin turning objects off and or moving them into the positions I want them to be. So the effect of the way I will do one of these is I will have a fully visible model at the beginning and then at the end I'll have an empty screen. Make sure you give yourself enough time at the beginning to be able to showcase your full model. Otherwise, you'll have to create a new storyboard just for this step. Now, once I'm done, I can select here to export my video animation, and it provides multiple options for the sizes. This brings me to my simple tip for Adobe Premiere Pro that I'll show you right here. I'm sure other editing platforms also do this, but when I import this video into Premiere Pro, I drop it on a sequence in the video timeline and I touch on that clip. I can right click and go to speed duration. There I have the option to click on the checkbox to reverse the video. At that point the video plays exactly as if I had set it up that way to begin with. You can see my timeline playing backwards here. Alright, so pretty simple, fun video here. I think it does some really cool work and I'm excited to use it. Again, you'll see it in the instruction blogs in the future. Now if you're wondering how I captured the semi-rendered fly-around views at the outset of this video, I was simply screen recording in the rendering tab and orbiting my models with this awesome gadget right here, a 3D connection mouse. It makes for very smooth, almost animation-like orbiting and zooming. I use this tool constantly. I kind of feel like I'm playing a video game while I'm drawing with it. I have an Amazon affiliate link to it in this video description. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification. If you want to see more of my videos, just simply check out this next one here.